Hello everyone. Welcome to this week's Facebook Live. I'm Ruth Norton with Ruth Stamping Corner. Today we are making this adorable box. I'm going to show you what's inside in just a minute. But this is what we are making today. It's super cute. It's it's uh, not too complicated. And it's one of the, the little clam style, clamshell style boxes that I just love to make. It's probably the box style I make most often. But it's so easy and it's so quick and it's so easy to make for... A bunch of people if you need to make a bunch of them but before we get to our project let's talk about all the things that are going on while we're waiting for people to join paper pumpkin the subscription period for october is coming to an end if you have not subscribed for october's paper pumpkin make sure you do that by monday monday october 10th is the last day to subscribe for october's paper pumpkin it is going to be christmas cards it is going to be so adorable i can't wait for it and then november's is going to be a coordinating christmas kit so back to back christmas kits for october and november they're going to be good so don't don't wait on getting this one make sure you subscribe the only way to guarantee that you get paper pumpkin is to be a subscriber they don't always have refills so don't always count on having on being able to purchase those refills in the store so if you want it you gotta subscribe there's a link to subscribe in the video description you can head to the paper pumpkin website and subscribe all right, if your wish list is super long, you might want to consider joining Stampin' Up! this month. We have an amazing join special going on right now. The starter kit is $99, and normally you get to choose $125 in product, but this month only, October 4th through the 31st, you get to choose $155 in product. So that is a massive deal. Plus, with your, with your starter kit, you're also going to get a free paper pumpkin. You're going to get free shipping on that kit and all the fun business supplies that you're going to need. Now, there's no obligation to sell or do videos or do anything. You can just be your own best customer. You get a discount when you become a demonstrator, and you get tons of other Stampin' Up! perks, like getting to see products early, exclusive events, and, of course, being part of my team. So if you want to join, there is a link to join in the video description, but if you want more information, please contact me. I'd love to talk to you more about becoming part of my team. This is such a good offer. $155 in products for... $99. You get to choose those products. It's such a good offer. Such a such a good offer. All right. Um, time is running out to subscribe for to sign up for my card credit. You don't subscribe for it, but you, it is a class to go. You do have to RSVP for it. Um, card crate is a class. It like I said, it's a class to go. It's gonna come straight to your mailbox this month. I am featuring the sweet candy canes bundle. This is such a cute bundle, and um, I had so much fun playing with this one. It is going to be eight cards it's gonna be a stamp stack so you're gonna make two each of uh four amazing cards you're gonna have eight total and you get twenty dollars in product card crate is thirty five dollars and it comes shipped to your door if you need to add on the bundle you can do that and i pay the tax and shipping on that for you um send me an email if you want to sign up for card crate or you can check the link in the video description for all the details on card crate the last day to subs to sign up for card crate is october 10th Okay. All right. If you are shopping, make sure you head to my online store. This is October's host code. All orders receive a PDF with three exclusive projects. If your order's over $50, don't use that. Or if your order's over $150, don't use that host code. You'll still get the PDF and all orders over $50 receive the make and take kit that coordinates with that PDF so you can make those projects at home. All right, guys, this is what we're making today. This super cute box. It's a little bit bigger than normal, so this will hold lots of treats. But let me show you what I found that goes in them. So I found these. Um, they're called Hostess Bouncers. So this is what they look like in the store. They say that they're new. So make sure you check your your grocery stores. Um, but they also had Twinkie flavors. This is the, the Ding Dong flavor. But they also have Twinkie flavors. So I think they're pretty cute. And um, I think my kids are dying to eat them. So we're going to make this so I can give them, give them to my kids. But... It is such a cute box. It's such a fun little treat, too. You can make this for a little birthday gift or maybe um, have them at your desk. Keep them out for your desk. Hand them out for birthdays. I think it's really cute. All right, so let's get started. We're going to start with the box. We're going to use Poppy Parade. And you need a pretty big piece of cardstock here. So um, you're going to need almost a full sheet. You need a piece that is eight and a half by eight and three quarters. So this is the eight and a half inch side. It's almost a full square and then eight and three quarters. So start on the eight and a half inch side so on the shorter side start on that side and you're going to score at one and a quarter on each side so score one and a quarter and turn it all the way around and score at one and a quarter again 
All right, now put it on the longer side, eight and three quarter inch side, and we are going to score it at one and a quarter, at three and three quarters, at five, and at seven and a half. All of these measurements are in the video description. And they'll be up on my blog in just a little while, so you don't have to worry about writing anything down. You can check out my blog or the video description for um, all the measurements. Don't worry about that. Okay, fold and burnish on all of the score lines. And then we're going to do some trimming. And we've trimmed up this style of box before, and it's no different than what we've done in the past. It's just a little bit bigger. And this is a good kind of, this is a good style of box to have in your in your repertoire because you can always modify the sizes of this you just have to modify the sides and then the top and the bottom and it's a good box you can make anytime just modify those the sides all right so on the long side we have the four score lines here the box is completely symmetrical so it's the same on this side as on this side so it doesn't matter which side you make the top which side you make the bottom but we're going to trim it all the same so on the long side we're going to cut up on the the rectangles and we're going to notch in on all of the squares so i'm just going to start by going through and cutting up on all of the rectangles the little square pieces are going to get glued into the box so we don't need to worry about those all right i'm going to fold this out of the way and then we're just going to go through and notch in on those squares they don't have to be perfect because again they're going to be glued on the inside we just want to get rid of any of that bulk and Maybe that one a little bit more. There we go. And again, don't worry about making these perfect or pretty because they're all going to get glued inside. So that's what one side looks like. And we're going to turn it over. We're going to flip it over this way. We're going to trim up this side the exact same way. Okay. Just trim up those straight lines. And then notch in on all of those squares. Okay. Pull this out of the way. Trim trim and I'm gonna trim and one more tap to do all right last one and that is all of our trimming so get all that trash out of the way this is what your box should look like so the tops and the bottoms are all trimmed all right now like I said it's all symmetrical so it doesn't matter which side is which, just pick a side to be your top and your bottom. And I'm actually gonna flip it over and I'm going to put adhesive on all of these sides. And actually, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that we're gonna put the DSP on first. So I'm gonna put the adhesive on, but we're not gonna glue anything together just yet. I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus. This is a nice, strong adhesive. You can use tear and tape. You can use your Tombow liquid glue if you want. Anything that's gonna be nice and strong and hold your box together. I'm going to put my DSP on first before we um, go any further because I want to make sure before we assemble it, I want to make a little finger notch there. So I need to do that before. So again, just pick whatever side is going to be your top. It doesn't matter. And I have four pieces of DF DSP. This is the Celebrate Everything DSP. And um, let me show you that DSP. It's so pretty. This is our host DSP in our... I don't want to stick this, I don't want to glue my DSP to that, so I'm going to move that out of the way. This is our host DSP in our um, mini catalog, and it is so, so pretty. Um, I just love this DSP. So you can only earn this with your Stampin' Rewards. Look at that pattern, this one is my favorite. Where is it? There it is. My favorite. So you can only, it has stuff for all occasions. You can only earn this free with your Stampin' Rewards, so that's when you're order is $150 or more, you're going to get those Stampin' Rewards, and that's how you can purchase the the DSP. Now, that doesn't have to be all your orders. You can gather up some friends and put in some orders together, but you won't, that's the only way you can earn this DSP. All right, so I have four pieces of DSP. Let me, let's go through them. So we have five and three-fourths by one. This is going to go on the very front of our box, so let me glue it down. I'm going to switch to my just plain Stampin' Seal. So five and three fourths by one. This is the front. And just stick that down. Just kind of line it up. There's gonna be a little bit of border all the way around. We have five and three fourths by two and a quarter. This is gonna be the top of our box. So a little bit of adhesive on there. So 
this goes on the top you can decorate the back if you want if you want the the back decorated you'll need another piece that is the five and three fourths by one and then we have two pieces that are two and a quarter by one each and those are going to go on each of the sides here so just on those pieces there this is going to be the side but on the inside so you're not going to really see that so i don't worry about doing the the sides for the the back there all right so that's where all your dsp goes this is now your front and we're going to punch a little finger notch here we're just going to eyeball center now for this box i used a half inch circle punch but we are using the lovely and lasting bundle which has this let me flip it over has this beautiful um label punch so i'm actually going to use that for my finger notch so i'm just going to kind of line up center and i'm going to make this fancy little border so i only have my paper in just a little bit right there I'm just gonna punch that and then we have this super fancy little border for our finger notch so it just steps it up just a little bit more so throw that trash away all right now we can assemble so this is our lid so we want to just adhere these these two to this side here so line this score line up with this cut edge just like that and just like that all right so that's our lid and so for the bottom of our box, we're just going to glue these tabs in here. So line up the score lines with all the tabs for the rest of these. So the score line goes in here. We're going to do this other side exactly the same way. So line up the score lines. Just like that. And just like that. All right. So that is our box. It closes easily. You can maneuver this score line back here so it opens and closes there you go isn't that cute super cute super simple and you have your fancy little finger notch down there all right let's grab one of our little cake box cake things stick it in there fits perfectly you can um also fill this with so many other treats you can even fit like a nice scarf or something in here too it's a pretty big box so you can fit lots of fun stuff in here if you don't want to go with a fancy little treat all right let's talk about the bundle that we're using we're using the lovely and lasting bundle this is such a good bundle this is in the, the mini catalog it's a punch bundle so it's gonna cut out this little label here and we're gonna stamp that but everybody loves a punch bundle so we're gonna do all of our stamping i'm gonna bring this piece back in so we know exactly what we need to stamp and i have a scrap piece of white here and i'm gonna bring in my ink pads so we have pale papaya we have Poppy Parade and Shaded Spruce. Okay, so those are our four ink pads. This is a photopolymer stamp set. So I'm going to bring in my stamp and pierce mat just so we get some nice, good, solid images here. Now we need to stamp this image, the flat flower image. We need to stamp that twice. We're going to stamp it in Pale Papaya and in Shaded Spruce. So let's stamp that. This is a bigger stamp, so I'm actually going to flip it over and ink it this way okay so pale papaya first and we're gonna cut out those flowers there are no dyes so we will have to fussy cut them Let me pull this up just a little bit there we go isn't that a gorgeous image though so pretty all right let me clean this i'm gonna pull out my stamp and scrub you want to clean it before you go into your next color it is a lighter color the pale papaya into the shaded spruce so it probably wouldn't matter too too much but you dry this a little bit but um it's always good to just clean it now the the shaded spruce one we really just are focusing on the stems not too much the flowers we're gonna end up punching this out anyway so just punch, stamp that down look at how gorgeous that image is so pretty all right let's do our label so i'm going to i'm actually going to put my Pale papaya away. We don't need that one anymore. Move that out of the way. And I'm going to do my label in Poppy Parade. I'm going to stamp it down here in the end of the paper so that we have enough room to punch it out. And I'm going to close this. And then our greeting is from that same stamp set, and then we're just going to stamp that right in the middle in shaded spruce. Okay, thank you. Perfect. All right, let's put all our ink pads away. We're going to do some punching move this out of the way all right so for our label of course we have our label punch here which will fit perfectly always stamp punch your images upside down so you can see exactly where you're punching line it up inside 
pinch it out. All right, now for our stems here, we want this shade of spruce stemmed area. We want the stems. I'm going to use this punch. This is a really fun. This is the decorative circle punch. This is also in the annual catalog. And I just want to make sure to get as much of these three flowers as possible. So I want this little one on the side. I want this big one. And I want this little one. And then I want to make sure I get some stems there. So I'm going to punch that out. And then for our pale papaya flowers, we're going to fussy cut those through the Magic of Television. I've already fussy cut the three that we need. And we're going to adhere those with dimensionals. If I can find my dimensionals. Okay, there. My desk is such a mess. All right. So I'm going to put some dimensionals right on top of these shaded spruce flowers. And peel those off. And then we're just going to line these up directly over. So this one, this one's easy. This one just goes right on top, just like that. Then we have these beautiful two-toned flowers. And let's see, this one, I think, nope. Let's see, which way does this go? <laughs> Here we go. Right, this, why can't I figure this out? Here we go. Like that. It's not entirely crucial that you get it perfect, but it does line up a little bit easier if it's all perfect. So there we have our, our beautiful image with our stems and our flowers. And we have our label piece here. So let's finish assembling. I have a piece of shaded spruce that is four and a fourth by one and a half and I've already embossed it. And I cannot remember the name of this embossing folder. It's gonna be listed in my supply list on my, on my blog. You can use any embossing folder or you can even stamp a background on it. And this is just gonna go right on top of our box. Just putting that down with some stamp and seal just kind of center it okay right on top of our box and then these are going to go on here but i do want to add some ribbon first so i have some so this is our, our white seam binding and i have already colored it i don't know if you can see we're going to color it a little bit more but it's very lightly colored with the pale papaya light stamp and blend so i just took my my ribbon i laid it flat take your brush and your marker and just lightly go over it just like that and that will give you any color ribbon you want and I love this with our seam binding ribbon it's because it's so light it's easy to color and it dries pretty quickly you don't have to worry about long drying times all right I'm going to tie a big loopy bow with this maybe <laughs> we'll see so I want nice long ends and I want nice long bows and light loops here so Let's see, I think that is pretty good. And I'm gonna take my label here and I'm gonna put some stamp and seal on the back and I'm just going to adhere this to the back just to hold it all secure. And I'm putting it kind of on the, the right side of our label. And let's trim those ends a little bit. There we go. And now dimensionals go on the back of both of these and they'll go right onto our to our project and we'll have one more finishing touch to do and then this one is done okay. Okay. this dimensional is the one to play nice so i'm going to grab another one the little backing did not want to come off of that one all right one more on that one and then we're going to put a couple on this one and i'm going to put one right over that ribbon just to hold it down a little bit okay. all right let's bring our box back in Want our flowers the flowers are going to hang off a little bit that's okay and then our greeting will go kind of right over that just like that isn't that cute so cute all right now just to finish it up grab your take your pick tool and i have some brass butterflies here and we're going to add a few of those add one here add a little one up here and i'm going to add a few on the right side as well one over here and a couple these brass butterflies are probably one of my absolute favorite embellishments they're so flat so they're very post office friendly which i love i love a good post office friendly embellishment but they are also super shiny and sparkly and i love them all right guys so that is our our fun box here and it looks like i used a different color here did i not use the right color I do have pale papaya. I don't know why this one looks so much different than this one. This one definitely looks more yellow than that one. I'm not sure why. 
Um, maybe this is petal pink. I bet this is petal pink. But it works with both colors. I think this is petal pink because now that I look at this ribbon, I think it's petal pink. So it works with both colors, you guys. You can make your flowers and ribbon any color you want. So now you get two different versions, petal pink and pale papaya. I think they both work really well. All right, guys, that is it for me. I will be live on Sunday in my VIP group for week two of my 12 weeks of Christmas. I'm working on a super adorable box that I think you guys are going to love. All right, guys, head to my online store if you want to purchase anything. If you're watching this on Facebook, please share this with your crafty friends. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. And let me know if you like the petal pink version or the pale papaya version better. Let me know. All right, guys, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you later. Bye.